Hello everyone and welcome to another guide. Today we're going to cover something that's very important for Mythic Plus Dungeons and that's how to chain pull properly. I see a lot of people doing this incorrectly and not covering all of their bases. So let's go over exactly how to do this correctly. Now the only disclaimer I do have is you do need to be a little bit more careful with chain pulling if you have the bolstering or the necrotic affixes in your Mythic Plus Dungeon just because those can add up and those can really hurt your tank and in turn your healer's mana very quickly. There are three main points you need to know when chain pulling. The first is the state of your healer or more importantly your healer's mana. The second is your gear as a tank and your survivability. And the third is the DPS potential in your group, mostly for AoE and cleaving. Let's dive into each point a little bit more. Now before you even start a chain pull, basically what you're going to be doing is basically you're going to be pulling 1-2 to two packs and when that pull goes to sub 50% health, probably between 20 and 30%, you're going to go and pull another pack or two and keep momentum going from then on. So there is a bit of a checklist you need to do before pulling your second, third or fourth or whatever pack you're on after the first one. First thing is to take note of your healer's mana. Now if your healer has less than 30% mana, you might want to wait for them to drink up a little bit. If you're above 30% mana, you can probably deal with one or two more pulls as long as they're not too aggressive or too dangerous. Another thing you need to know is how your cooldowns as a tank are. If you have absolutely no cooldowns and your healer is extremely low on mana, maybe you should hold off. However, if your healer is at exactly 30% mana or right around there and you do have bigger cooldowns ready, you can jump in and manage your cooldowns efficiently to survive that pull. One other very important point is since you're going to be walking away from this pack, and leaving them with 20 or 30% health, you have to make sure you have enough threat on that mob to last until they go down. The very last thing to note before pulling another mob is that no tank wants to get hit from behind. It's very unmitigated that way. So what you need to do is somehow snare the mob that you're in. Now us warriors, we have thunderclap, it's also a snare, it's great. But if you don't have an AoE snare, you need to get one of your DPS to apply an AoE snare at about 20% health so you can safely run away without having a pull or two wailing on you from behind completely unmitigated. Now let's go over a few of the things that can go wrong and you should definitely try to avoid. So one of the things that can go wrong is you're here on your second or third chain pull, your healer's running a little bit low on mana, and a pack comes around and body pulls to you. Now the way to avoid this is to kind of know where each pat lives and pull them when you want to. If you do not want to run into the pat, but you want to pull a mob that is in its pat, pull that mob back. Positioning of a mob is very important, especially when it comes to not trying to over pull and end up in a wipe. That brings us to our second point, over pulling. Now what this means is that you should know what each pack is in each dungeon. Now what this means is if you pull one mob, they'll probably come with two or three other mobs and you need to know what each grouping is. Also along with over pulling, is the fact that some of your DPS or yourself as a tank can body pull. Now you do have stuff like Hunter's Barrage and other AoE abilities that can basically pull other packs unintentionally. So you do need to be very aware and be able to pick up an additional pull just in case anything gets over pulled. But you should always try to move and position mobs in a way to where your DPS can cleave an AoE as much as they want and not pull anything else. Another thing that can go wrong is just not being geared enough and this applies to all roles. If you as a tank are not geared enough you're gonna take too much damage and your healer is gonna go oom um, and you'll basically go down. If your healer is under geared they won't be able to keep up the heals necessary for the amount of damage and mobs that you're pulling. And if your DPS isn't geared they're basically gonna stretch out the fight, it's gonna become super long, you're gonna run out of cooldowns and your healer is gonna run out of mana because there's not enough damage. So you need to make sure that you're doing content appropriate to the gear level that you're at. Something else that I have seen happen a lot is that the tank is way more focused on which group he's going to pull next that they stop thinking about their natural rotation. Now what this means is they stop using their active mitigation ability, they stop using cooldowns, they stop using everything in the order that they should be using it and instead they're focused on pull again, pull again, pull again. 
As a tank, you need to maintain focus and you do need to maintain your standard rotation at all times because this minimizes the amount of damage you take in. You're going to be taking more damage than usual because you're chain pulling. You can't also afford the luxury of taking more damage on top of that by ignoring your mechanics. The last and biggest point that I've seen every now and then, although it's a little more uncommon, is breaking LOS with your healer. It is a healer and DPS's responsibility to keep tempo with the tank. However, there is such a thing as getting way too far ahead of yourself and pulling way too many mobs going around a corner and breaking LOS of your healer. As much as a healer should follow a tank, a tank should also be very aware that a healer can't do their job if you are hiding from them. Now let's go over a few of the things that are going to be your biggest friends and the best allies for you while chain pulling. Now one of the best things you have as a tank is short and effective cooldowns. Now what this means is your active mitigation is probably going to be your most effective and shortest cooldown. But besides that, every tank has cooldowns that vary from about 45 seconds to about 2 to 2.5 two minutes. And these are going to be in the sweet spot to be used maybe something like every other pull or something like that. You should save these so that you minimize the amount of damage you take, saves your healer mana. It allows you to just keep going. And you should definitely use these well before a boss so that they're back up for the boss fight. Something that is ignored a little bit is trinkets are amazing for chain pulling. There are trinkets that have activated abilities that give you more armor, more avoidance, whatever it is. There are a lot of good trinkets out there that really help out when you're chain pulling. Just pull a little bit too much, pop your trinket when 100% of that pull is active. Then when you go down to 50% of that pull, maybe four mobs, you can handle those four mobs with that trinket down, no problem. I do think that activated trinkets are better than stat sticks for chain pulling just because you get to choose when the majority of the effect takes place and you're always going to pick when you have the most mobs on you and that'll have the biggest impact on your survivability as a tank. One other thing to note that is very important is that you should not continue with your chain pulling if your cleave and AoE abilities are down. If you go and you body pull the second chain pull and for example for warriors you don't have thunderclap or revenge active you are not going to pick up threat on that whole pull and you're going to get a dead healer or a dead dps so the best thing to do is to wait the extra two or three seconds for that aoe or that cleave ability to come off cooldown and then do the additional pull and ensure that you have the abilities to pick up aoe threat now that sums up all the tips i have for chain pulling as you start doing this more and more and you're progressing more through your mythic plus it'll start becoming second nature to you to just glance over at your healer's mana and make sure you have your aoe abilities and equip certain types of trinkets and pop certain cooldowns when you need them if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below i do my best to answer every comment question so if you need specific help on these activated trinkets or if you have any class specific questions on when to use what abilities go ahead and leave them down below check the description in this video i will link to an extremely well thought out and written out guide by someone in the tanking discord to basically go over best trinkets for every single class and as always good luck tanking out there